Today I wanted to talk about something that has been in my mind a lot throughout the past couple of years, and that is gatekeeping. But before we get into it really quickly, I'm going on tour. I make music under the name Dev Lemons, and I'm gonna go on tour and play all those songs in the fall. It's gonna be great. Uh, you get to hear all my classics. Link to the tickets are in the description. It's gonna be really fun. Please come, it'll be great. Okay, back to the video. There's so much gatekeeping in like different corners of music in a variety of ways and I just wanted to talk about it because I feel like I've always been on the side of I think it's always wrong I think it's never understandable I think it's really really annoying I think it is so annoying and counterproductive to be a gatekeeper I don't think it's quirky I don't think it's cute I think it is really annoying and counterproductive and selfish but the more I've looked into the other side of the argument for the sake of this video I can understand why people do gatekeep music and there are some cases where I honestly am like yeah no I get it I think it's a little warranted no I, I like I kind of get it and we'll get to that so if you don't know what gatekeeping means it means to sort of control access of something I guess or to hide something from the mainstream you want that artist all to yourself that artist is your little secret it makes you feel different from everyone because your taste is so elite it's so just niche you're so niche and different you like this artist and you're different for that and I think you could go beyond that too because I feel like that sort of energy of oh you're wearing that band's t-shirt name three songs then is also in a way kind of gatekeepy and exclusionary of people who may maybe are just casual listeners and could kind of deter them from wanting to get more into that band because their fan base is full of annoying people. A lot of people who make music, you would like to assume that they would like that to be their career. Like they would not be opposed. In fact, they might dream of being a musician full time. That is their goal. And in order to be able to make music full time, you have to be able to make money off that music. And the way you make money off that music is to have a big enough fan base that will listen to your music and go to your shows and buy your merch, all this stuff, you know, to be able to continue to fund that artist career. Why I'm so strongly opposed to gatekeeping is because I think in a variety of ways, it's just so counterproductive. If you love an artist so much, they are so special to you that you feel the need to keep them to yourself. You don't want anyone else to hear it because their music speaks to you and it's different than anything else in the mainstream. And you don't want it to get like TikTokified or whatever. That sentiment of, oh, I want this artist to stay small and stay my secret is basically you being like, okay, well, I want this artist to struggle to keep this career afloat so that I feel different and special and quirky. Like, I don't want them to be successful. I don't want them to have their dreams come true of not having to work at Starbucks while also trying to tour and make this album catch on and the sound catch on. And I also just don't get the point. I understand the desire to want to feel different, but just because you like an artist that blows up and becomes mainstream, doesn't necessarily take away your individuality. You can still love Steve Lacey when See You Girl came out and remain that same unique person when bad habits blows up. Like that doesn't affect you. That just makes you feel less unique. But with the rise of TikTok, I feel like this gatekeepy sort of nature is getting stronger and stronger and TikTok is being used as sort of like a, oh, well, if this artist, this niche artist I like, has a viral TikTok song, the TikTokification of their music will just deem them a TikTok artist and they won't be taken seriously by anyone, ever. So this video is to the song Venice Bitch by Lana Del Rey. Someone posted, so are we finally gonna acknowledge that this is one of her best songs? Someone said, Lana Stance, I'm asking you with all your life, gatekeep this song. It's the last thing I have left. It's literally my all time favorite song. And if it gets TikTokified, I will do something to end up on the national news. I don't want this song by this already mainstream artist to become mainstream. And the response on this is interesting. Literally, when Yes to Heaven went viral, my whole world crumbled. Like, that was such an important song to me. I see what they did to Cinnamon Girl and Star Girl. I can't. Like, Star Girl was okay to go, but Cinnamon Girl. Never forgive them what they did to Yes to Heaven. What did they do though? Like, but what did they do? Also, isn't it called Say Yes to Heaven? Like, it's not called Yes to Heaven. No one actually knows the name of the song. <laughs> and it's just so ironic. Like, the fact that you are duetting this video and telling people, oh, don't listen to this song. Like, keep this song a secret. And then it gets 109,000 likes. Also, it's like, dude, come on. Venice, like, Venice bitch off of Norman fucking Rockwell. 
Like, this is the album we're trying to gatekeep. Everyone has heard of this by now. Like, everyone kind of knows. Like, it's just such a pointless battle to fight because Lana Del Rey is already massively famous. Like, she's already kind of had her big break. Norman fucking Rockwell especially is like, that is one of probably her most mainstream albums out of all of them. And like, this Heart Shaped Sunglasses song is another one that people are like, I hope the person that brought this to TikTok falls off a cliff. And the response on this TikTok of, I'm pretty sure this song is a leak. I actually don't know what project this Heart Shaped Sunglasses song is off of. I don't think I've heard it before. I wonder if it's an unreleased song, which is a different story, you know? I think it is an interesting concept to want to gatekeep a leak because I think listening to a leak in general kind of stinks. It, like, it stinks when a song gets leaked that's not supposed to, and then everyone goes and listens to it. I think it's valid. You don't want people to find out about this unreleased song because it f***s with the promotion, the strategy. Like, it's never good for a song to leak unless it's intentional from the artist. Like, you don't want other people to find out about this song because the more people find out about this leak, the, you know, it might just never come out because too many people know about it. I don't know. But the response on this video is a lot different from the previous one. There are a lot of people that are also just like, it's a song. It's literally Lana Del Rey. It's literally Lana Del Rey. As if Lana isn't mainstream. I just think it's so funny when people try to gatekeep massively famous artists too. Cause it's like the argument of, oh, well, you know, it hurts their career when you gatekeep them. That's not really warranted in that case when it's someone like Lana Del Rey, like she's already massively rich, it doesn't matter. But then it's like, what's the point of trying to gatekeep someone who everyone knows about? What is what is the point? Because this is already a mainstream artist, like you've already lost the battle. Now, there are some instances where I feel like the visual that is associated with a song can hold so much power whether it's Addison Rae dancing to Prom Queen by Beach Bunny, or there are instances where a song by an artist that a lot of people love, but is still underground, blows up, and a lot of people who are TikTok users' first impression of this artist's song is, might be to a really cringy trend. So when people are being first introduced to this not super mainstream artist music, their first impression can't help but be a little subconsciously tainted by the fact that a really cringe trend is associated with that song. And I can understand being upset that this artist's rise to fame had to come from something cringe happening. And maybe people might not take the music as seriously as they would have if they would have just found it organically. But let's dive into this example first. Oh my God, guys. I don't know if you remember this, but back in 2020, um, when Prom Queen by Beach Bunny was like massively trending, Addison Rae did an ad for American Eagle jeans and danced to the chorus of this song, which is about struggling with an eating disorder. Let's watch. <laughs> things going on with this, right? Because this was an ad for American Eagle jeans. There is a possibility that Addison Rae didn't have control over the song. American Eagle licensed this song from Beach Bunny to be used in an advertisement, and the advertisement ended up being Addison Rae having to choreograph and post a dance to this song that covers very sensitive topics, very blatantly. Like, the lyrics of the song are literally shut up count your calories, if I get more pretty, do you think you'll like me? Like this song, even though it is upbeat and poppy, like it covers some pretty deep, dark topics that are very sensitive to a lot of people. But it kind of can feel like a slap in the face when there is a song that, you know, talks about the struggles of having an eating disorder and body image issues and stuff like that. A song that a lot of people who also struggle with this turn to to cope with these struggles and um, to have like the American beauty standard <laughs> of a person come on screen to just like, it can be seen as a little insensitive. Like I get it. I've struggled with like depression and eating disorders specifically in the past, like in high school a lot. And a lot of what did help me cope with those emotions and struggles and get through those tough times was music. So I feel like if I would have seen, you know, someone do like a cute 
dance to King Park by law dispute. Like, can I still get into heaven if I, I would be, I would be upset. Another song that immediately comes to mind is Colors by Monty Booker. This was huge in 2020 for a variety of reasons. There was a dance trend that was created to the song. I am not talking about that when I talk about this video. There was one specific video or just like series of videos. I think this also kind of did become a trend that was associated with this song. There were people that were like, damn, it stinks that you made this like cringe thing to this song because it, it ruined the song for me. Back in 2020, this guy used to make so, so many videos to this song and do this thing. Like hundreds of these, hundreds. And a lot of people, you know, were like, wow, this kind of ruined the song for me. It like made it cringe. And now I can't unsee this visual with this song. So there are a variety of instances that people do want to gatekeep music that don't have to do with the fact that they want to feel like their taste is unique. They just either don't want the first impression of an artist that they love to be associated with something that's cringe, like a cringe visual, like a cringe TikTok trend, or songs that cover dark topics will be brought to TikTok and people will sort of make lighthearted sort of videos to them and it could be seen as insensitive, like the Addison Rae Franklin dance. I think it sucks when stuff like that happens. I think it's cringe. I will say I still don't think it is 100% a net negative that the song got popular on TikTok because although there are people that are going to enjoy the song in a lighthearted way or people that are going to, you know, do cringe things to the song, there are going to be cringy people that like the song now. This is also introducing these songs to just more people in general and more people will love this music. More people will discover these songs, whether it's through a cringy video. I literally found... <laughs> I, this is how I found this song through this video like this exact guy's video is how I found the song It wasn't through the dance first. I think this is the one I saw first and I still was like that's too much But this song is really good. What song is this? And then I still went and I checked out Monty Booker and this song was like on repeat for me Monty Booker's discography in general was just like my go-to music for a decent amount of time like I would not have found Monty Booker if it weren't for this guy, maybe. Do I think it's cringe? Yeah, but I wouldn't have found an artist that I love if it weren't for that. Does that make it any less valid for me to enjoy the music? I think although the Addison Rae dance to Beach Bunny, yeah, it's cringe, but there are a lot of people who are gonna find this music through that video, and this music might also help them through a really tough time. And I think to want to withhold that from people, I just don't understand why. To take it out on like everyone and like, ugh, I hate when this music becomes mainstream because stuff like this happens. Guys, it's fine. Like, let people just like stuff. It's okay to let people like. And then there's this other layer of gatekeeping, especially when it comes to songs getting big on TikTok, artists getting big on TikTok, that people get upset when a concert by an artist they love sells out a lot quicker than it used to because a lot of people who just found this artist on TikTok and only know one song bought the tickets and maybe they're taking those tickets away from people who love the songs, who know all the words and all of that stuff and make it harder for the real fans to go to the show because now all these fake fans, all these TikTok fans are coming and taking up the space. For example, this Steve Lacey concert in particular is something I thought of when I was thinking of this. I'll just play the clip. is so interesting to dive into because this would happen without TikTok when an artist becomes mainstream. This is an inevitable thing when you become mainstream. This isn't some sort of phenomenon that 
happen just because of TikTok. Yeah, there are a lot of people who are finding music through TikTok who only know music through a TikTok song. And maybe they only know the words of that TikTok snippet and they go to this concert, whatever, right? But when an artist becomes mainstream, that inherently means that more people are finding this artist more people know the name of this artist they're not all necessarily super fans and that's normal ed sheeran one of the most if not the most mainstream artist in the entire world has a lot of people who know his name who maybe know the chorus of shape of you but they don't know anything else if he went up on stage and was like okay sing the second verse of shape of you same thing would happen it's not necessarily because of TikTok. it's because they just have a bigger fan base and a lot more people will casually be listening to this artist. That is something that just happens when an artist gets more popular. More people hear the artist in passing, they hear them in stores, whatever. And I think to expect everyone in an artist's fan base as they get mainstream, like every single one of those new fans to become a diehard fan, I think is just unrealistic because that's just not, that's not what happens. Like there is no mainstream artist where every single person who listens to them knows all the words of their song. And the Steve Lacey video in, in particular, like I can understand why that would be hurtful that people are only coming to your show and they don't know the rest of the song. They only know the TikTok snippet, but at the same time, it's like, Come on, man. Like, these people didn't come to the concert to get a pop quiz. They didn't. They came to hear you sing the song. I think to be like, oh, you guys are all, you guys know this song, right? Like, okay, keep singing it then. It's like, <laughs> come on. Like, some people just go to concerts to have fun. They just go because they like your music. Maybe they don't know every word. Maybe they're not a diehard fan. But why are they less welcome to go to a show to enjoy that show? And to say that it's not fair to go to a show if you don't know that artist well because you're taking the space from someone who does really know the artist well, that's not a fair claim. Because with that mindset, you might also be preventing someone from discovering an artist that they will soon grow to absolutely adore. I went to a 21 Pilots show my sophomore year of high school before I really knew that much of their music like I kind of knew some of them but that show going to that show and hearing that music live seeing the performance live with someone one of my friends who was a fan of 21 Pilots that made me a such a huge fan of their music like I was sold on them and I would not stop listening to them for weeks months after I went to that show because that show moved me so much to check out more of the stuff and go wow like man I wish I knew these songs when I went live, so now I'm gonna go see them live again. Like most people that are going to a concert, a lot of the time, maybe one of them is a super fan and they're bringing their friends who might not know the artist as well to come with them, to share that experience with them because they love that artist and they want people to go with them. That are their friends who might also enjoy the music once they hear it live. That is so normal, like that is kind of a lot of what concert going has always been. At the end of the day, I think that stumbling across an artist that moves you so much that you feel like they are so special to you that you don't want to share them and have that artist ruined by becoming mainstream. Music has the power to do that. I understand that. And I think there are times where gatekeeping is less outwardly selfish and more just like, mm, you, you know, you love an artist so much and you don't want people's first impression to be through something like a cringy TikTok trend. I can understand that. And I think the pipeline of small artists makes really unique music. They get discovered because they get a lot of traction, they sign to a label, and then they make music that is a lot less special and a lot more commercially accessible. I think that is a thing that does happen, and that's a disappointing thing too. And to not want that to happen to an artist that you love, it does make sense, but regardless, at the end of the day, you gatekeeping these artists like they're going to do whatever they want at the end of the day like the only positive side of gatekeeping is really only ever in the gatekeeper's self-interest i don't want other people to find this music because i want to feel special and i don't care about the artist's career succeeding i don't want to share it's mine with music theory oh i don't want music theory to become an easily learnable thing because now everyone's gonna know and it'll be widely accessible and i won't feel as smart as I do now because it'll be more common knowledge and it'll be more digestible and because it was really hard for me to understand putting it in simple terms makes me feel like I'm not as smart obviously the term gatekeep is used sarcastically a lot I get it like I don't think that anyone's like mm, gatekeeping this like as a joke or whatever is like a horrible person but I do think that if you genuinely believe that keeping an artist very very secret is 
a good thing like you genuinely get upset when an artist that you love that was super small becomes successful and mainstream i think that is selfish i think that you should be happy for that artist they're succeeding and a lot of people are appreciating that artist a lot of people have found love for this artist that you love too because they are special and just because an artist that you like that not a lot of people know becomes mainstream that doesn't make you any less special of a person you are still a unique individual you are still as unique as you once were even though venice bitch by lana del rey blew up on tiktok even though Bad Habits by Steve Lacey blew up on TikTok, but you've been listening to See You Girl since day one. That doesn't make you any less special. This doesn't reflect on you as a person. This is good. Like, we should want artists that we love to succeed. We shouldn't want them to stay secret. We, we shouldn't want them to stay undiscovered. We should want to share that music because if that music is touching you in a way that, like, is that deep and special to you, don't you want other people to feel those feelings? Like... Don't you want other people to appreciate that music and have their taste broadened and have their perspective on what makes art good broadened? Like, I feel like that's a beautiful thing and we shouldn't want to keep that from people. So that's my take on gatekeeping. And I think that, listen, I, I feel like I was very blunt in my take on this. If you are a person that in the past has been like, I don't want people to find this artist, they're my dirty secret. Like, you're not a bad person. You're not inherently a bad person. I, you know, I'm sure I definitely was like that in high school. In high school, I wanted to feel different. I wanted to feel unique. I wanted to listen to music that no one around me was listening to because it made me feel special and important. As I've gotten older, I've realized, oh wait, no, like that is a selfish way to look at things. And I think if you've looked at things like that in the past before, or if you're watching this video and you look at things like that now, like you're not a bad person. That's, this is just my take. That's just my perspective on gatekeeping. And I think it's interesting stuff. And I think there's a lot of layers to it. And let me know what you think. What do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments below. And if there's anything else you want me to talk about on here, let me know too. And if you're new here, thank you so much for watching until the end. My name is Devin and I make YouTube videos on here. I like to just talk my crap. And I also make music under the name Dev Lemons. And I also am in a band with Nick Queef Jerky, our little band, and I love it to bits. It's great. We just put out an album. It's awesome. If you want to check out my music, go check it out. I really love all of it. It's all very special to me, and I think you might like it too, maybe. I don't know. If you like this video, give it a like. It would mean the world to me if you subscribed. It would really just help. It would just help. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great little day and a good little night. Aww. Aww.